Hi, welcome back to the shop. Uh, we've got this old furnace about tore apart. I think I'll just go through every little component piece, or major component piece rather, and kind of give a real quick explanation. This will be part two of this little series. Uh, if you want to, back up, watch part one. Like, subscribe, comment, you know, all that jazz. Uh, let's get started with what's what and maybe what it does. So we'll go from there. Okay, so we're back. This is pressure switch. Um, pretty simple little device. Once the inducer kicks on, like I said earlier, it pulls a vacuum or pulls a lower pressure through the primary and secondary heat exchanger and it purges the products of combustion up, the, up and out the flue. Uh, this thing has got a diaphragm inside of it, a micro switch here. Some of them, this one is really old. It's original to the furnace. So it's 20 something years old. The newer styles of pressure switches <coughs> are typically all in one piece and are made out of plastic. And this one, uh, well, it's original to the furnace. Anyway, there you go, there's pressure switch. Uh, this is transformer. It takes uh, 110 volts in this case because it's a gas furnace. They run on 110. Cuts the 110 down to down to 24, 27, 22, something like that, volts AC. And that's what all of your control circuitry runs on. Uh, this is control board. Uh, this is the upgrade control board. This is not the original one that came on the furnace. They had some issues. Uh, they discontinued that, sold this upgrade board. So this is where all of your logic is that runs it. Uh, you've got a couple of little ICs, bunch of big resistors, diodes, capacitors, all that stuff. <clears throat> but this is the guts, or this is the heart, this is the brains. This is what does all of the sequencing, all of the timing, and the sensing of the flame. And that's probably the most important thing. This is your safety device, your main safety device. This is what interprets all the other switches and components. And this is just the housing for that. This is the door interlock switch. No big thing. This, this is the burner assembly. Uh, if the old boy that owns the company that put this thing in seen that shipping coupling in his gas lines, he would probably be a little upset about that. But you know what? It lasted more than 20 years, never, never had a leak. So the guy that, uh, the company that installed this is a really good, reputable company. Uh, been in business a long time and uh good guys I, I know know them all pretty good so this is the burner compartment this would be as you see it from the outside of the furnace this is the inside of the furnace this is the ends of the burners of course these burners look pretty cruddy they are 20 years old uh, you know if i was doing a service on this furnace Checking it out in the fall, I would probably recommend replacing these burners if I've seen burners that look like this. Uh, you can sort of clean them, but it really usually doesn't last. This is the igniter. It's a uh, silicone nitride or nitride or some. It's really fragile. It's not made in Italy, though. But these are really easy to break, just like that. Uh, this is the flame sensor. Some of the old timers called it a flame rectifier. Basically, you know, you're, you light over here, the fire travels over here. There is a, it rectifies an AC signal into a DC signal. There is some uh, ionization that happens inside the flame. That DC signal is, re or that AC is rectified into a DC signal. And the, com the control board interprets that as Yep, we got fire, or nope, we ain't got no fire. Uh, usually you'll see somewhere between three and maybe six microamps of DC.
current if you put your uh, fluke meter in here when it's running. Obviously, if there's no fire, there's no, no micro amps. This is the gas valve. I mean, just no White Rogers gas valve. Nothing, nothing fancy about this machine at all. It's just an old single speed machine. Uh, about all it is. That's all, about all there is to the uh, to the burner compartment. This thing's, this thing's been laying out in the back of my trailer. Like I said, I changed this furnace out in an ice storm or a snowstorm. Uh, wasn't a big, bad, nasty one, but it seemed like it was that day. <clears throat> so anyway, this is, that's why it's got ice in it. I just brought it in a few minutes ago, cold out. This is what a inducer looks like. Uh, pretty simple. There's the motor. It spins, boom, boom. That's about it. We'll crack it open and take a look at the impeller and stuff. Okay, so here's the inducer. Took apart. This is just the back side of the inducer. Uh, probably can't see it in the camera, but this thing is full of soot because it was burning so nasty right before it went out. Uh, and you definitely can't smell it in the camera, but this thing smells like three miles from the gates of hell. I mean, it's, it's stinky. Here's the, what you would see looking at it from the outside of the inducer. Here's the, the wheel again, lots of soot in there. This is pretty hard plastic. A lot of times when these fail, the hub cracks out of them, uh, a little overheat. I mean, this thing runs Oh, 3,300 RPM. And this little piece of plastic spins in some pretty good heat. You know, something on the order of 140, 150 degree heat. Uh, it gets hot. It cracks. I and mean, you can see some little stress cracks starting to form down in there. So there's the inducer. Okay, about the only other major component we've got left is the blower. Okay, that's, that's a blower. I mean, it is what it is. They pretty much all look like that at some point in their lives. This one's actually not that bad. You can see there's uh, probably a dead mouse or something down there in the bottom of it. I don't know what that is. But the, the important thing is there's no real buildup in here. Just a very slight dust buildup. They all look like that. Your furnace looks just like this unless it's just been cleaned or it's brand new. Uh, it's not a big deal. If it gets much deeper than that, it needs to be cleaned. You need to call your furnace guy. He'll come out, pull out the blower, take it outside, scrape out all the dirt, blow it out with an air hose. He might even take it apart and wash it with a water hose. It just depends on who taught him to do what. But anyway, that's... That's what a blower wheel looks like. This was a three ton drive, 80,000 BTU furnace. So it's not a monster. If it had been a five ton drive, this thing would have been a lot wider and it would have had a bigger motor on it. So there's that. Okay, let's see if we can get the secondary heat exchanger out of here. These things are heavy and they have a taste for human flesh. So, you know, this is not typical. You know, if we were in a house, there'd be an egg oil sitting up here in a case. Uh, I wouldn't have, sometimes you can't take this, this top off here. So this makes it a lot easier. Uh, of course, I'm gonna show off for the camera every time I can, right? <laughs> wow, that was way too easy. Okay, I'm going to reposition the camera. This thing's upside down right now, but I'll reposition the camera and show you where this thing fell. My God, does it ever stink. Phew.
Okay, so we're looking at the bottom of this. This would be, this is basically, this is where your blower sits, where my hands are. And this is the secondary heat exchanger. This is a clamshell style secondary heat exchanger. Uh, it's also got a clamshell style primary. This thing had failed so bad, it was dripping water out of the furnace back here. You can actually see some corrosion stains and some rust stains back in here. Uh, that's a pretty common to them when they fail like this. Okay, I've moved the camera to the side so I can not be in the way so much. Uh, this would be the direction of airflow through this thing. Blower would set on this end of stuff. Uh, egg coil would be up there. This is up here is the primary. This is the secondary. This is the coupling box. Uh, some manufacturers call it the hot header. Uh, it's just the transition from primary heat exchanger to secondary heat exchanger. And uh, you can see the seal has failed down here in the corner a little bit. Uh, and this thing is full of soot, rust, corrosion, filth, nastiness. Okay, this is just a baffle. It keeps the products of combustion evenly distributed through into your secondary heat exchanger. And here is the outlet of the primary, and this is the inlet of the secondary. And I mean, you can see that is disgusting. So what happens is all of these little surfaces here, this is just a crimped construction. It's not welded and they're put, to, they're put together with a sealant. And, you know, it's 20 years old, the sealant failed. It started sucking air, leaking water. So that was the mode of failure. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to this. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Uh, like I said, I'm just happy to, that by the grace of God, we got this little old lady. Oops, I want the camera. We got this little old lady back in business uh, in a timely manner. She's happy as a clam right now. So, uh, y'all have a good one.